you know, we sat here, you know, a week ago and talked about uh, clinching the West and how big that was for us and, and that we've kind of gone into every week and said it was a championship game and um, you know, one game at a time, next opponent, obviously we knew we had a big test going to College Station and playing Texas A&M and, um, you know, just always start with just proud of our guys' effort. Uh, you know, I told them they were going to be judged really how we played from the second half on. We talked about it all week. Um, you know, I think when you play in these games with maybe with somebody with a little bit more depth and on the road or, or all those things to put together, you know, there's probably just a little less margin of error. Um, and we had that. You know, we had some, we had some mistakes and um, you know, they get magnified in a game like that. Uh, but just so proud of our guys for fighting and clawing and, um, you know, obviously offensively we moved the ball up and down the field. Really um, couldn't stick all of them in the end zone. Had a few special teams miscues, and I know, you know, obviously we get a field goal block. We missed two. Uh, we'd like to have those back, and, and really proud of Nick for the year he's had. But uh, got some things we can correct going into a good Middle Tennessee team who has got a chance to play in the conference championship. I'm sure it's senior day for them, so um, will be a big game for them. And uh, as we say, it's the next one. It's the conference game, and of course, it secures home field advantage for us. So. Obviously, a huge game for us. Questions? Talk a little bit about uh, how adjusting these past two games has been progressing. Uh, obviously, due to a couple of kids uh, with Tane come back, you lost uh, Lee Lee to 67 on third game or 70 yards. All six of those completions went for a first down. Just three of three for 76 yards on the center, 10 plus yard uh, third down at the end. Chris Perkins on his only fourth down throw to get the touchdown. So, how would you gauge this uh, adjustment? Well, first, I think, you know, we've got a few of those throws that um, I know the interception right before half, you know, was, you know, that receiver was getting hailed as, as the ball was thrown. Maybe that when he gets back, uh, which was a big, you know, was a big play. Um, so he had a few of those and, and a couple he missed a few open spots, but overall just played terrific and really proud of him. Offensive line, we did a really good job in protection. We were concerned about how good a run defense they play. So, you know, we really came in with the idea that we could throw the ball. We did. Uh, really proud of our receivers. I thought our receivers played really well, but really proud of Tyler. You know, just, you know, it really improved really from the last week and just another in a huge, unbelievable setting to go out there and perform like that. Just really proud of him. With, with Tyler, how much is it to get Tyler Bryant? I mean, you have so much confidence when you throw it there. At times when you really try to protect balls and get yep. tight, how much do you, do you have to you know, not get on from trying to make the Correct. Maybe when they start, don't let that spot, but then you complete it. Correct. There he is. I, you know, I, I always relate it back to a basketball shooter. You know, I mean, the guy's got to keep shooting. We got to throw what we do. Turnovers are the difference, and, and really, and as we said, that is the number one stat in football. So, uh, as we've always said, some of his middle throws are the ones I always worry about. Uh, his outside throws have always been terrific. Uh, you know, and he's still progressing. You know, he's still progressing. Um, but the number one stat is, is turnovers. So, you know, you got, but you do. You can't. You know, if it's always no, no, no. You know, he'll never throw the ball. So, you know, we try not to. Overcoach him on that, but I mean that is a that is a huge part of what we do is protect the ball. What is the status of the quarterback spot? So you know, um, Erdley is feeling a lot better. So we'll just kind of play this week out and see. Uh, he's gotten a lot better. Obviously, Tyler played well. Uh, so you know, as I've said before, we're getting into a kind of a good problem to have when we got a chance to maybe have both guys. We'll just kind of see how AJ does this week, but. Tyler played really well, is playing well, and um, we'll just play it out this week and kind of see what, what A.J. looks like, you know, who has the, the best week, and, and then we might have, you know, you might see two quarterbacks in the game. You never know. Not the way we practice, there shouldn't be. I mean, you know, it, we would not throw him out there if he's not repping all week. He came, you know, he threw the ball well last week toward the end of the week. We had really rested him and protected him. He threw the ball well in warm-ups. Um, you know, so he was kind of ready to go. And um, we just didn't, we didn't have to have him, but it's a good problem to have to have both those guys ready. And, and we'll see how he does this week when he throws all week. Talk to a little bit Saturday about, uh, you know, uh, Greg Dunn coming to play and having to play a little bit of injury. But uh, uh, what can you tell us about uh, Jared Marino and Bronte Harris that didn't play Saturday? Uh, and you think they've been resting up a little bit on Well, um, losing Bronte Harris, I mean, you know, and that's the things we don't do. We don't go make an excuse. But when you lose maybe your best DB um, in a throwing game, that's it's huge, and you know he got an ankle injury. You know, previous week we will get him back, so we'll see how he is this week. Um, we don't know yet, and then hopefully we'll have Garrett back this week. He was close, but not 100%. So maybe you lose your best D lineman, 
you know, so your best corner and your best lead lineman out for a game doesn't help you. But of course, we know injuries happen, and then of course that deal where we've talked about that open date early in the season, some of that stuff just starts to wear on you. But um, we hope to have Garrett back this week. We'll see about Bronte. Correct. Yeah, I mean, Starling, we don't think of him as a freshman. So, you know, he's we're so excited about him. Getting to play in that setting, of course, is just going to make him better down the road. Um, I, you know, defensively, once again, I told you, you know, going in, how good they were offensively. I mean, you've got the best, arguably the best back in the league. You've got a dynamic quarterback. You've got a tight end who we think is the best in the SEC uh, or, or one of, you know, catching the ball. Uh, huge offensive line. I mean, you know, we were worried. And, and so uh, to have a couple key guys out didn't help us, you know, from a depth standpoint. Uh, but they fought. Like you said, we were pretty good on third down. So uh, we've got some things to correct and get better at, and we knew we would, you know, but I was proud of them overall. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. I think just for, for our city, I mean, obviously the record uh, that we have at home would, would also help. Uh, just playing into that, but just to get that championship game back for our fans in our city would be would be is is a huge deal for us. You know, speaking about Middle Tennessee, I mean they are playing very very well. Three losses against SEC schools, one loss without their quarterback at FIU. So um, it's going to be a big deal to them. It's going to be a big deal to us. But to get the game back here would be would be tremendous. Well, we're going to just, you know, to be honest with you, we're going to play this one as it is the championship game. It's the next one. Um, if they can play, they're going to play. Uh, now, if he's limited and he can't go full speed, then, then, then we've got to decide is the guy behind him better? You know, and I think that's kind of what your question is always. And that's where luck comes into this game. I mean, it just, you know, if, if the wrong guy gets hurt or gets an ankle or whatever, I mean, so, you know, that's the stuff that. Um, you know, we don't make excuses about it. it's the next man up. I mean, look, we're sitting there with our third center against Texas A&M, you know. I mean, and we literally had one bad snap. Now, it was a key one, you know, but, I mean, what a great job he did. And uh, thank God for that red shirt rule. Um, but Greg Ficana did good. Now, you're literally at your third center in a shotgun offense. But he did terrific. Uh, proud of him. Um, and then those other two guys, you know. And, and you know, you got Jaron Street that we're hopefully going to get back. So, uh, but we're going to win this game. You know, I mean, that's that's the only way I know how to do it. Yeah, well, first, you know, just talking about him, you've got a guy, I mean, what does he start at four years? It seems like he's been there for 20 years, you know. Uh, you're the coach's son, and your coach, coach, and your dad's an offensive, part of the offensive staff. I mean, so what does he not know? Um, you know, and everything I see and everything I hear on him, they go as he goes, their whole team. Um, so he is a competitor. He is at, what was he, 30 for 33 last week? I mean, that's how you don't even hear that. Um, he can run the ball. They run him. He's tough. Uh, and then Tony Franklin, who I've known for 20 years, you know, um, is a dynamic offense coordinator. You've got all the system, you know, but they're going to run it more than the Mike Leaches of the world. But it's, Every crazy formation, <laughs> you know, if you can think of it, he's probably done it before, uh, which keeps me up at night. So you got that, uh, that side of it that goes along with, with him being the quarterback. So, I, you know, it's a dynamic combination and tough. And you obviously saw what they did to Kentucky, being right there at the end against a really good Kentucky team at Kentucky. Correct. Well, they screen so much, they run him so much, the ball comes out so quick, you know, that we've got to mix up some pressure. You know, we've got to be very multiple. And then they're a tempo offense and they'll play fast, so you've got to make sure you're lined up too. So there's, there's a million variables. Of course, you know, I think as we always talk about, that system kind of started out Valdosta, you know, which was old BYU to when I was in South Georgia to Kentucky. And we really adopted that system into high school and it trickled up instead of trickling down like things normally do. So, you know, there's all kind of variations, but I've been dealing with this thing for about 20 years now, and it's, there's a lot to it. But they do run the ball. They run it with physicality. They've got a number of good running backs. 
Um, their O-line is good. I mean, they are, they are a really good offense. And, and playing well, obviously, with him is a big deal, you know. No, no. I just think they were just disappointed, and that's really where we want to be. I, it was a, you know, it's kind of a, a, a wild feeling to be out there on the field with that atmosphere. And I've been to a bunch of, I mean, Tennessee and Alabama games, and um, you know, you can think of the, you know, I've, I've never been to Michigan, but I mean, I've had guys that have been to all of them and said that's the best atmosphere, the loudest they've ever heard. And I mean, we were sitting there in the first half, minus some, you know, if we just take away some, some mistakes, give them credit though, you know, and that's, I think we always talk about what happens in special teams sometimes when their backup might be a five star. You know, he's the young guy that gets to play on special teams and you're down a guy. And so that's where sometimes it shows up. But to be in that game for our guys to play with the confidence they did, um, the expectations we had going in. And, you know, we're a totally different team than we were last year when we played Florida, but that's how it felt. You know, it just felt totally different. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think we're just at a different spot and the expectation levels are different. And I, I know we're disappointed, but I think there is confidence to be had for going in that environment and fighting like they did throughout the game. And, and, um, and that's what I wanted to see from them. I mean, just like Coach Clark said, you know, it's, it's the next game. So it's obviously like the most important game. But just looking back on everything, it's kind of surreal. But. It's surreal, like from the outside looking in, but from our standpoint, it was like this is what we expected. So it feels good, and it just feels good to like know that all the work that we've put in is like, you know, starting to come into fruition. You, you say the next game mentality, which is obviously you, you know you guys approach that thing, but does this one sort of have a little feel of a little more when you're playing for a championship? Is it is there a little bit of, of you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's always like uh, whenever you got something big to play for, you know, it's a lot easier to get up and play, you know. But, and especially when you're playing a really good team. So, I mean, we're really excited. So, yeah, I guess you could say <laughs> it's a little bit extra. For, for you guys as a defensive lineman, when you're playing a quarterback like this, a guy who's, you know, seems so good, um, does that add a little for, um, I guess, excitement for you guys to know that, you know, trying to, yeah, I mean, definitely just like as just like as a defensive front, you know, we we try and affect uh, all the quarterbacks we play, just make them uncomfortable and just make them like take them out of their game. So if we can do that, then we feel like as a unit, we've done our job. Have you got a chance to watch any film of them yet or, or as players or is that um, something that you can't uh, Me personally, I've watched a little bit of film. I literally was about to go watch some film right now. But I've only watched a little bit, but they look good. With them, what, what, what jumps out to you on film with, with Stotts as a quarterback? I mean, what, what kind of just in the early film, I mean, what jumps out about him? Um, it looks like he's just really like he knows what he's doing back there. He doesn't look very uh, scattered or all over the place. He's just very calm. He's just really a field general out there. So I mean, that's something that we really like have to affect. Um, just from the A&M experience, I feel like everybody just played extremely well on the defensive side of the ball. We just, just all of us came out with that same attitude and intensity that we normally come out with. But just in a game like that, it's just the margin of error just gets smaller and smaller. So it's just really small details that we can easily clean up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just whenever we, well, just on a defensive standpoint, you know, whenever we make a mistake, it's it's seven points. Like we don't get the luxury of like getting another chance. So any error or anything, it could be like a touchdown. But after a game like that, you know, I'm just proud of everybody on that defense and just how hard all of us played. So I mean, yeah, definitely after every single game. I mean, it's still it's still tough. We still got a bad taste in our mouth, but. Yeah, I feel like everybody's a little bit more confident. Um, it's a good feeling because, like I said, um, we everybody knows that we run the ball pretty good, especially to be in this conference. 
So um, <clears throat> we felt like we had some good matchups with some of the um, DBs and our receivers. And Tyler Johnson, our receiver, was, you know, stepped up. They took that uh, challenge pretty serious, and we kept practicing. They were working hard for us. So it kind of paid off, like, during the game to see those receivers really go make some plays in that big-time environment. So that was good to see. And, I mean, it just, like, shows that the offense is starting to expand and get better in every aspect, like running the ball and throwing. And so, I mean, we can throw the ball and catch it as good as we did this past game and still run the ball as good as we know we can. I mean, we'll be a pretty tough offense to stop. Coach, is the last thing you want to hear if you're an offense that you're one-dimensional, right? You know, that was kind of the talk. So that was the concern going in from the people who really didn't know, I guess, this program was that far into their run. Like, how cool was it to just prove that to other teams who are watching film on you, yeah, I mean, it feels good just like because it's um you know it's gonna make teams like have to respect it, you know. And like I said, um, like I said, offensively like running and throwing the ball like the run start to open up later. But like I said, it was like a real good feeling to see our guys make those big plays through the air. And I mean, if even like Spencer and Tyler, like the carries they did get, they were um good carries. Like just see them make those plays. So I mean, it's definitely as another big aspect, and it's just real good to see that. And knowing that other teams see that, they probably gonna know. Like you know, I mean, we can't predicate ourselves on completely stopping the run game because they got some pretty good receivers, like with depth. And uh, so, it's definitely gonna have to make them like pick their poison, so to say. Um, I mean, it's probably it's it's probably like definitely some carryover because you know, like I said, like in this league, people play fast, but that was definitely a different uh, a different speed. And like I said, for the most part, offensively, um, we did move the ball pretty well. We did um, pass it and run the ball some. We just didn't really finish. So I definitely feel like the fact that we know we can play at that speed and at that level kind of gives like a little confidence going into Middle Tennessee knowing the game speed may not be as fast, but it's going to be pretty fast. And, you know, we're still going to have to play um, as fast as we can offensively. So it's definitely give like a little confidence, like I said, like everywhere around. Even with the loss, it's something to build on, something to learn from. And we did a lot of good things. So, you know, we're just going to try to carry over our speed of the game and, uh, you know, fix our mistakes and just go from there for this week. Um, I don't think it changed the mentality. I think personally it's a little better because, you know, you kind of like, as opposed to just kind of getting up in the morning, kind of just sitting around all day, it's kind of like you get up and when you up, you kind of know that in a while it's going to be kickoff. So, you know, I personally like um, the morning, afternoon game because you just go ahead and get up and play football. You ain't just got to, you know, sit around all day and, you know, watch it and just wait on the moment to play. So, but I don't think it's going to change the mentality. We had, we had a lot of um, afternoon and um, afternoon kicks last season, so most of these guys in this team, you know, used to it. So um, I think we'll just adjust like pretty good and just go on and go with the flow. As an offensive line and experienced one, I mean, what's it been like playing with three different centers? And why? What? What's been the key to sort of really not missing a beat, no matter who's playing center? Just the fact that we all mesh real good together, and like, I mean, we work hard as an offensive line, not just as a one group or a two group. Like, you know, whether this is a first string or a third string, like we all work together the same. Um, we all came to work in the summer and in the spring, and we really bonded together, and we all got chemistry as a whole. And that's definitely, you know, misunderstood. It can be easily misunderstood, you know, just like with one group, you think you got chemistry, but the way we work together, how hard we work like, you know, as a unit, um, we got chemistry everywhere. So we can easily mismatch guys and um, just put them in there and they plug and play. And like everybody come in and take it serious when they're trying to learn something new. So it's like we try to make sure nobody misses a beat because you never know what can happen with injuries, you know. And uh, I give credit to definitely Greg and uh, Drew for coming in, stepping up in like the biggest game that probably we've played in since uh, we've been back.
as a program. So that's definitely good to see them young guys stepping up because they're going to be the future of this program. So, so for to see them to come in and uh, perform the way they did, that was big time. How do you feel about the way Tyler I think he handled it pretty good. I think he made a lot of big plays, a lot of great throws. And I mean, he's still learning. Um, he's still a young kid with a lot of potential. So he's going to definitely learn. And But for him to come in and do what he did in that environment with that team at that, um, that venue in college was still big time. And I know he definitely wish he had some plays back that he could make a difference on. Like I said, you live and you learn. You know, it's a lesson learned. And uh, he got a lot to build on, you know, from that game. So, you know. For a fact, he going he gonna to definitely be a big-time threat. Like, the older he get, he keep playing in this league for sure. So he did real good. Like, we wasn't – all the stuff that happened, you know, we always got Tyler back no matter what. It's the same with all our quarterbacks, you know. We always got each other back. Anything else for James? What's it like uh, playing for uh, somebody like uh, Coach Wright? You know, obviously your own body needs to learn, a lot of physicality, a lot of hard work. But uh, Coach Wright comes off as very – a real joyful, positive guy. So what's it like kind of, you know uh, – Uh, yeah, I mean, Coach Wright and, um, and Coach Cam, they both are um, some really good coaches. They um, they know the difference between, you know, kind of like just being like always serious and like kind of having a little fun and like knowing when it's time to like really lock in and uh, pay attention. So it, it's real fun playing for that because, you know, you got coaches like that, you know that you ain't going to always be uptight. And, you know, you're going to have like, you know, fun while you're learning and still getting better. So it's definitely um, a lot of fun playing for both of them. You know, uh, every week they come in and make sure that we know the game plan. We know what was going to be done. And from Monday all the way to Thursday, you know, they stay on us to work as hard as we can during the week. And, I mean, we have fun doing it. So, like I said, it's definitely fun playing for them.